now my very dear students today we are going to talk about receptors you know receptors are very special macromolecules which are present within our body and different ligands work on them now we have to first discuss what is ligand what is receptor right uh, ligands mean ligands mean the substances which bind with receptors the specific receptors for example all the hormones in your body are acting as ligands hormones all your neurotransmitters all your neurotransmitters neuro trans meters are also ligands then all the drugs you use they also bind with certain receptors so they also work as ligands so we can say all your hormones and neurotransmitters and drugs and even toxins all of them bind with specific receptors to produce their effects because they have to bind with special receptors right so we call them ligands toxins and even some other chemical molecules chemical substances now all these ligands have to work on a receptor let's suppose this is a receptor right now what really happens that receptor has one point to which a ligand binds these ligands are supposed to bind with a very unique point and this point where these ligands bind these points are called ligand binding domains what are they called this is a receptor and this part of the receptor to which a ligand bind right this part of the receptor is called yes ligand binding domain right now once a ligand bind with ligand binding domain of a receptor then receptor is supposed to produce some biological actions receptor will produce certain biological actions biological activity biological actions or biological activity in the body is modified now again let me repeat what is receptor receptor is a macro molecule another way to define receptor is receptor is a macro molecule to which a particular ligand binds and then receptor undergoes some transformational change and produces biological effects on the body the point which you have to remember is that if hormones or neurotransmitters or drugs or toxins or chemical substances bind with some other substance they bind with some other substance right but this does not result in any change in the body or biological function this should not be called receptor look for example there are plasma proteins many drugs or hormones or toxins or neurotransmitter they tend to bind with the plasma proteins but once the drugs or chemical substances or hormones when they bind with the plasma proteins plasma protein do bind with these ligands but plasma proteins don't produce any effect on the body because plasma proteins do not produce any effect on the body so we say plasma proteins are not receptors is that right again let's repeat what we have discussed up to now let's recap what is a receptor receptor is a macro molecule receptor is a macro molecule in a biological system to which a certain ligand binds ligand may be a hormone or neurotransmitter or drugs or toxins or other chemical substances and once the ligands bind with a specific receptor that will result in some biological modifications in the organism is that right now listen if you don't have a clear concept of receptor you really don't understand how the hormones work in your body you don't understand how neurotransmitters work you don't understand how the most of the drugs work even you don't understand how the most of the toxins work so if really you want to understand actions of hormones neurotransmitters drugs and toxins fortunately or unfortunately you have to understand how the receptors work what are the receptors what are their classes how do they work right now 
first of all we'll talk about two basic types of receptors you see all the substances which are going to work on the receptors we have given a name of ligand to them now all the substances which are which have to produce an action on a cell they can be broadly classified into two groups for example let's suppose here is a cell yeah this is a cell right now on this cell let's suppose there is hormone number 1 hormone number a and here is a hormone number b hormone hormone a and hormone b now these two hormones have to work on this receptor and modify the action of this cell again this is hormone a this is hormone b or ligand a or ligand ligand b and these ligands are going to act on the cell and modify the function of this cell the question is that that there are two types of basically ligands some which are large molecular weight which are large molecular weight and some of them are highly yes polar highly charged now those ligands which are large molecular weight like peptides for example peptides or those ligands which are highly polar like catecholamines they are highly charged molecules they cannot dissolve into lipid membranes because these substances cannot dissolve in the lipid membrane so both of these substances they cannot enter into cell due to their big size or their high charge because they cannot enter into cell so if they have to modify the action of the cell they have to have their receptors on the surface of the cell these ligand has to work on the surface of the cell again all those neurotransmitters or drugs or hormones which are large molecular weight and which are highly polar or either they cannot dissolve into lipid membranes of the cell they cannot enter into cell because they cannot enter into cell so their receptors should be present on the surface of the cell the receptor should be expressed on the surface of the cell so this receptor this receptor is cell surface receptor or it is a protein which is expressed on the surface of the cell membrane opposed to that there are some you can say ligands which can directly enter into a cell they can directly enter into a cell these are highly these are either small molecular weight substances small molecular weight substances or they are highly lipid yes they are highly lipid soluble now such substances which are either very small or they are highly lipid soluble right they can dissolve into lipid membrane and enter into cell and because they can enter into cell so their receptors should be present yes within the cell their receptors should be present within the cell that's the beauty of it that all those substances which usually cannot enter into cell their receptors are expressed on the cell surface and all those substances which can enter into cell their receptors are present within the cell they may be in the cytosol or within the nucleus is that right now next time if i ask you that there is a substance which is very large and highly polar its receptor should be present on the surface and if i say that there is a substance which is highly lipid soluble and which is very small molecular weight its receptor should be present within the cell the receptor should be present within the cell so it means primarily we can classify receptors receptors expressed on the surface of the cell and receptors which are present within the cell right so this is the basic classification of receptors now i can give you some very interesting examples of those substances for which receptors are on the surface for example peptide hormones peptide hormones for example yes you know many peptide hormones like yes insulin everyone knows about insulin growth hormone prolactin fsh yes lh tsh and so many others all these substances are large peptide 
they cannot enter into cell. So their receptor should be present on the surface of the cell. Opposite to that, another group, along with that, there is another group of compounds which are highly charged, which are highly charged. For example, uh, catecholamines, 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 for example, yes, epinephrine, right, or norepinephrine, or dopamine, right, all of these are highly polar. If these are highly polar, highly charged, can they enter into cell? No. So their receptors should be present on the surface of the cell. In the same way, either you can talk about acetylcholine, yes, there are 5-hydroxy tryptamine or serotonin, there is histamine, there is prostaglandin, then there are many, so many substances, all of these are not soluble enough to enter into cell. So their receptors should be present on the surface of the cell. Opposite to that, there are some substances which are really highly lipid soluble. There are other substances which are highly lipid soluble. This should not remind you of facial nerve palsy. Right? And small molecular or small molecular weight substances or substances which are highly soluble, their receptors are present within the cell. What are the examples of such substances? Fine. All the hormones, the substances which are derivative of cholesterol. More truly speaking, all the substances which are derivative, which are called steroid hormones. Now, steroid hormones, yes, steroid hormones are highly soluble. Now, it means steroid hormones will work on the surface of the cell or within the cell. Answer is within the cell, right? Now, what are the, can you name few steroid hormones? Of course, there are so many. For example, yes, testosterone, progesterone, progesterone, estrogen, yes, then there is testosterone, progesterone, estrogen, then there is aldosterone, aldosterone, then there is glucocorticoids and even you know, Vitamin D is basically a derivative of steroid like structure. So we can say vitamin D. What is the special name for vitamin D? Cholecalciferol. What is the special name for vitamin D? Cholecalciferol. Is that right? Now all these substances are highly lipid soluble. So when they act on the target cell, they freely move through the membrane and the receptors are present within the cell and there they act, right? Now, then there are other substances which are very small molecular weight. For example, T3, T4, these are thyroid hormones. Or you can talk about retinoids. Retinoids are vitamin A related compounds. These substances are also able to cross the cell membrane. So their receptors should also be present within the cell. Now we will go into detail of receptors. We have already discussed that there must be two types of receptors. Number one, the receptors which are expressed on the surface of the cell and receptors which are expressed within the cell. Is that right? There are receptors which are expressed on the surface of the cell. They are for those molecules which are highly polar and large molecular weight. And then there are receptors which are within the cell which are for small molecular weight ligands or which are meant for highly lipid soluble ligands. Now, the, we will start discussing you know receptors, we have said it, you can say within the cell membrane and these are within inside the cell, inside the cells. Now first I will discuss all the receptors which are expressed on the cell membrane, right? Now we will go into detail of those receptors which are expressed on the, yes, surface of cell membrane. Now let's suppose this is a cell right and this is the surface of the cell the many types of receptors which are expressed on the surface of cell i will just talk about the most important groups one whole family of the receptor is like snakes you see they are made by a very large you can say peptide and this peptide seven times passes in and out of the 
cell membrane look what is this this is a receptor and this receptor consists of a long peptide chain and which passes in and out through the cell membrane how many times seven times right and it has one domain outside this is extracellular domain and it has one domain which is inside and this is called intracellular domain right this group of receptors are called because they look like snakes right they are called very special name for such receptors they call them serpentine receptor serpentine receptors serpentine means something like yes please snake something like snake right this is a serpentine receptor right and they have also one simple name for this type of receptor these receptors are also called yes serpentine receptors are how many times they pass through the membrane seven. seven times so we call it seven pass receptors so i really love this name because it's easy to remember that it seven times passes but my kids like this one they don't know how dangerous is serpentine so they think serpentine receptors are good term anyway it's a very big family of receptors right and they pass through the cell membrane seven times right they have extracellular domain and they have intracellular domain extracellular domain is ligand binding domain to this point what will bind ligand, ligand will bind ligand will bind to this domain right and when ligand binds here it activates this receptor is that right when ligand binds on this it activates this receptor so this domain is called what is the name of it ligand binding domain opposite to that once the ligand bind on it and stimulate it then intracellular part will start giving signals to the cell it will start giving signal to the cell so this part is called yes what should be the name of it because it is going to produce effects in the cell so this part of the receptor which is going to produce ultimate effect on the cell this part of the receptor is called effector yes domain so what did we learn that seven pass receptor like other receptors have ligand binding domain and they are having effector domain ligand binding domain is outside the cell effector domain is inside the cell when ligand bind with the ligand binding domain there is a change in the receptor which is transmitted to the effector domain and effector domain give very unique signal to the cell right now life is not so complex that everything has to pass seven time there are other group of receptor whole family of receptors where receptor is very innocent it passes only once receptor passes only once through the membrane there is no way to pass it seven time they passes only once through the cell membrane because they pass only once through the membrane so their name is also very simple they should be called yes one pass receptor they should be called one pass receptor right these receptors should be called one pass receptor right another way of course then what happens that here is a ligand which binds here yes this is the ligand here is the ligand which bind with the ligand binding domain when ligand bi bind with the ligand binding domain then effector domain start giving yes signal to the intracellular environment is that right what is this domain effector domain and effector domain will start giving signals within the cell these are one pass receptors right there are many substances which work on the one pass receptors and there are many substances which work on the seven pass receptors for example the substances which work on seven pass receptor there are so many i will just give you few examples like catecholamines catecholamines every medical student know there is epinephrine there is norepinephrine yes there is dopamine all of them work through seven pass receptor all of them work through serpentine receptors even do you know that acetylcholine has muscarinic receptors 
which are seven pass receptors, which are to the family of seven pass receptors. Even prostaglandins, they have seven pass receptors. Again, histamine, seven pass receptors. You can talk about 5-hydroxy tryptamine, that is also, which is also called serotonin, that also work on the seven pass receptors. And then you can talk about, yes, there are so many substances like catecholamine, acetylcholine, prostaglandin, histamine, 5 hydroxy tryptamine. Would you like to know that even TSH hormone work on the seven pass receptors? So there are many substances which work through the unique family of receptors expressed on the surface of the cell and this family is called serpentine receptors or other name is seven pass receptor. But one very interesting point which I would like to highlight here, all of these receptors are coupled with very unique type of protein within the cell. This protein is having alpha component, beta component and gamma component. This is a trimeric protein. This is a trimeric protein. It has three peptides. This trimeric protein, especially its alpha component, it binds with a special energy powered guanine GTP. You know GTP binds with where? GTP is binding with the G protein. G protein consists of alpha unit, beta unit and gamma unit. So this black is a G protein and this is GTP molecule. If GTP molecule is binding here, it is very rich in energy and it become active or if one phosphate is broken, then it is GDP. Then again, its energy level of GDP is low. So GDP attached, G protein is inactive. Now listen. Alpha, beta, gamma is not make a trimeric protein which can bind with GDP or GTP, right? If it is binding with the GDP, it is low energy level. If it is binding with GTP, it is high energy level. And because these proteins are binding with the GDP or GTP, they are simply called G proteins. They are simply called, yes please, G proteins. Thank God some doctor did not put the name of this protein on his personal name or doctor's name. They simply call it G proteins. So what are G proteins? G proteins are unique type of intracellular trimeric proteins to which GDP or GTP binds. Is that right? And these are called G protein. Now remember one thing, very interesting, that all the serpentine receptors are working through different type of G proteins. All the serpentine receptors work through G proteins. That is why there is a third name for these proteins, these receptor and that is G protein coupled receptors. G protein coupled receptors. Now listen carefully in your MCQ. If you see there is a word of serpentine receptor, we are talking about this receptor. If they mention seven pass receptor, again it is the same system. Or they call it G protein receptors, it is the same system. Why they call it serpentine? Because it looks like a snake. Why call it seven pass? Because seven time it peptide passes through the cell membrane. Why they call it G protein coupled receptors? Because these receptors are intracellularly connected with the and working with the G proteins. Is that right? Now, I would like again come back to one pass receptor. One pass receptors have a unique effector domain and usually this effector domain is enzyme. Because this is enzyme, so other name for one pass receptor is enzyme linked receptors. Enzyme linked receptors. Now look here, it is seven pass receptor, it is one pass receptor, it is G protein coupled receptor, it is enzyme coupled receptor. Is that right? 